just going to run up a little paint and this little bugger. After you print out uh, the image to use as a stencil, just get the overall outline. Again, the shapes you've got to pick out, just go for the biggest areas first that stand out. Start with the overall shape of the face, just roughly, it doesn't have to be uh, highly detailed, just dust it in lightly. Cut out the rough shape from the printout. Keep the magnets away from the edge so you won't get too hard an edge because hard edges are difficult to remove after. All I'm doing is dusting in here and putting in the obvious positions of the lightest parts of the image. Really very rough but just to give you some sort of idea. got the basic shape of the outline now you go for the larger shapes within that shape don't worry about the detail just get the big shapes done I'm not going for a highly detailed painting it's just to give you the sort of workflow to get you started on what to look for. And just keep working in light layers so no line is difficult to adjust. Next again, the really bright areas and the rough shape of the side of the face. Just pick out the really basic shapes. You don't have to be too accurate. If you've marked an area in and you've got paint in your cup, don't waste it. Fill in where the lightest parts are. Now keep your distance and just blow in so you can just barely see it when you remove the stencil. Again more basic shapes within the main shape and you can keep going infinitum.
once you get the light areas in, you know, it, the rest is, uh, you know, these are a guide, so the rest just holds into place. Just marking in some lines which I think are going to be useful to me. Sorry about the hand in the way. Use stencils on you when you really need to freehand it. It's the best way to learn. Yeah, just enough so you can see it. And you just go in a bit closer with a, a bit more. Uh, white to increase the values of what closer to what they should be.
out in a bit of definition with a black now. Too much white and you lose your place. It's uh, still transparent black, five to one. Just add a bit of shading and the creases to start the fold in the skin. You know, the deeper the the crack, the darker it's going to be, more defined. start to add some shape in the forehead um, darkest places first and uh, they need to be deeper just go in and do type of tighter lines So it's got to be dusted in loosely at the moment and then the, some of the edges where the lines hit, it's got to be quite tight then. It's more for effect, not for detail. If you see lighter areas on the, uh, the reference, put them in a little bit lighter, it doesn't have to be totally accurate. And then when you remove the stencil, you start to get a shape of the hand. 
building up the lighter areas not going in close and do the tighter lines later just get the uh, the shapes in for this I'm using six drops of water to three drops of transparent auto wear white Obviously following the reference. Before uh, you put too much white, I'm filling in the black to bring the hand forward um, so I don't lose the edge of the fingers. And some more creases on the forehead just lightly to make sure they are in the right place and roughly the right shape bit of shading to add some form to the nose you can paint these by hand but why kill yourself get the main parts in with a stencil if you can
to sharpen up the fingers a bit with them edges use free hand shields or well you've got the stencil there use it Never work on the same part of the image all the time because you can get it really defined and then you're stuck then. You have to do the whole image the same. If you go along doing different bits and pieces, you can judge for yourself how it's going. Like for instance on the edge of the finger, that line is much too crisp. So you freehand over it. Where's the bloody going now? Up there now.
got a solid line all the way down. You've got a variety of uh, strength. It's very important to keep an eye on what direction the light is coming from. It can change an image totally. spray where I'm adding the light will soften the edge of the fingers more closer to more what I want. to get the effects of the folds in the fingers as my little schnauzer is barking in the background Just 
yabba dabba doing adding a bit of texture to the chops tend to do massive detail on this it's more for a tutorial where to look for shapes when I really need to punch the whites I use uh, illustration white uh, about three drops water three drops paint add in some more shapes and uh, definition from the reference they're a bit bold but you tone them back later adding a bit more depth to the shadows, the darkest part of the image.
after I'd done the white detail, you've got to send the, the darker parts back and the, make the creases deeper. I don't build up the image together, do the darks and the lights and the darks and the lights. Bring them up at the same level and they won't lose your place in the image then. Nothing on the image is really tight detail, it's tight enough to capture him. You know, you can go to many levels greater, but uh, this is not the object of the exercise.
shading with black to give shape to the fingers. Bit at a time. added a, a hint of colour to his eyes. Yeah, to make him a bit different. <laughs> 